Hi, this is Hans, hope all is well. I want to go over a few things that we ended up capturing at our UFO sighting events. Besides seeing unusual objects and flybys, we also see balloon licking objects. Now just to let you know, on a clear day, most of the time after we communicate, we will see anywhere from 20 to 50 objects. It's really amazing and very improbable. 30 to 40% of the balloon looking objects that we see at our events do not have tethers. What's interesting is that 100% of helium field balloons in retail stores are sold with tethers. It's just part of the price. Now I know the cynics out there are going to say that this is normal and we don't need to ask any more questions about it. The decision has been made and we need to move on. Whereas the skeptics are taking it several steps farther by asking why they don't have tethers. I mean, if someone decides to release a balloon, or one escapes while being tied to a chair, wouldn't it have a tether? What would have to happen in order for the tether to separate from the balloon? This is where our imagination comes in. In order to justify this, we have to use our imagination. We need to fill in the blanks and justify what we see or what we don't see. And we need to do this in order to create our reality. Here's a cute seven-year-old giving us a demonstration on how easy it is to separate a tether from a balloon. I gotta hand it to him in that it, I know it's not easy to, uh, to do. I picked this balloon up from Vons, $3.99, $4.99 if you don't have a Vons card, which is a lot of money for a balloon if you ask me. But I noticed they actually tied a knot with the tether to the foil balloon tag. I know the Dollar Tree uses a strong adhesive tape to connect the two. So notice the separation doesn't occur at the connection. The separation occurs when the tether is broken, which tells me that the tinsel strength of the foil is higher than the polypropylene ribbon. Now I'm not saying that it's impossible for a tether to separate from the balloon, but what I am saying is that it's more improbable to see a high percentage of non-tethered balloons in one setting. Yes, it's possible, but it's not so probable. It happens to us every time we hold an event. So here, let me give you an example. After implementing a UFO communication technique taught to me by Robert Bingham, I ended up seeing a very fast moving flyby. Now I see these things from time to time, but this is the first time I've been able to capture it on video with my Panasonic V520. And you have to believe your eyes, and I'm going to show you this object up close, that this is not a bird. So a little while later, this next one shows up. Now I'm not saying that this one is a UFO, but I wanted to show you my thought process. Now at first glance, this one could not look more like a purple balloon to me. It's abductive reasoning to think that if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, colored like a duck, it's a duck. What makes it suspicious to me is that when I called, this thing came. The other things are that it came without a tether, and the tether tag doesn't match the balloon. Now most of the star foil balloons sold in retail stores have color matching tether tags. I actually don't want you to take my word for this. I want you to go to the party store or even the grocery store and discover that when they punch out the shape of the balloon, they use the same material and the same color. They don't add the tether tag later. The last thing that stood out to me was that it looked flat. A brand new recently filled foil balloon cannot lift up a dime. A brand new recently filled foil balloon cannot lift up an empty foil balloon. I want to show you what a balloon looks like that has helium but not enough to get off the ground. Here's another one that's tetherless. I call this one Alien Eye only because it looks like it's surveying my area, maybe to see if it's safe. Number one, it doesn't have a tether and it's moving way too fast for a normal balloon. Number two, the camera movement is way too mechanical. It looks like the camera eye is being directed from one side to the other. Number three, if you look very closely, you'll see the camera eye splits into three nodes. I know it looks crazy and I can't explain it, but somehow it's scientific. We just don't understand it yet. I think in order to really appreciate something like this, you have to open your eyes and accept what you see. Magic has nothing to do with this. So my last example for this video is one that I saw at a UFO sighting event at Hollydale Park in Southgate, Los Angeles with Fausto Perez. This place is a hot spot. So this latex balloon flies by without a tether. I think it was one of the only characteristics that was unusual and the reason why it continued to videotape. The other one was the speed in which it was moving. Something that was moving this fast in this direction could only be seen for another 10 to 15 seconds. But something unusual happened. It began slowing down by zigzagging and then began to move in the opposite direction. This one was crazy, but real. So here's the video live. Whoa, it's moving pretty fast. Do you see it? Yeah. 
you see a bunch. Oh, salsa has a card. Yeah, yeah I, I have it. Got a card. We're out here for once in a while. Let's I post the events on yeah. Facebook. Post the, so I'm into this. My brother's all into this. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to talk about these weird events. You still got it? I saw this green little ball the other day. There were rules like buttons and stuff. It was like a stop and stuff. What does it look like, Jazz? Yeah. Yes. It's yellow. You see, it's a good thing I asked. I thought you guys were bird watching. Oh, watching like big birds. Do you see it? Yeah. 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 Yeah.